Amen. Amen. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the scriptures we will be looking at today. Please read along with me word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we will be considering and looking at today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Read along with me because um, I make mistakes. Okay? <laughs> I make mistakes. All right, so read along with me, check me out, okay? Like I said, be a Berean, uh, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Because, like I said, my mouth goes quicker than my brain, and my brain than my mouth sometimes, okay? So, um, uh, I had just received a text from a dear brother who, um, who gave a very short but pertinent thing here on uh, Proverbs 15 verses 24 and verse 26. I don't believe in coincidences by the way. I, I don't. Uh, I gave up believing in coincidences pretty much the millisecond the Lord saved me. Going on 16 years. Okay. Proverbs 15 24 on to verse 26. The way of life, Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is from heaven. He is in heaven. But yet he dwells in us. Okay? I'll let you figure that one out. Okay? We've talked about that at length. The way of life is above to the wise, those who fear the Lord, that he may depart from hell beneath. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. You are your own God. Claiming to be wise, you're, you're a fool. The fool says in his heart there is no God. But he will establish the border of the widow. A widow is someone who loses their spouse. Okay? And not you're not a widow if you choose to abandon your wife or your husband. Okay? That doesn't make you a widow. Alright? The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. You know? The thoughts of the wicked. You are your own God. Yea, hath God said, you will be like the Most High. Thinking that you're something that you could never be. Your own little God. But the words of the pure are pleasant words. Pleasant words. Thank you, brother. That, that, that was very, very interesting um, to start this. This was not the video that I thought was going to be done today, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not in charge around here, okay, when it comes to this. I learned a new word today. Morphology. M-O-R-P-H-O-L-O-G-Y. Don't bother looking in Webster's 1828, brother. It's not in there. Morphology. It has something to do with biology, but it is also, look this up, the study of linguistic words. Words. And I find it neat where it says here, but the words of the pure are pleasant words, that the infiltrating people, the fake, the copy and paste Christian, pay attention to their rhetoric, to their jargon especially, as trying to ingratiate themselves. You see this with a lot of these copy and paste Christians, also with the infiltrating Jesuit coadjutors who have like this bombastic vocabulary. But it's, hey, 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 they ain't nothing wrong with using words like that. But when you use them to try to put off this thing that you are something that you are not, that's, that's the problem. That's the problem. And you, got, and you got to remember, brethren, brethren, people, a lot of these infiltrating devils have the jargon. 
Some of them even, like I said, the copy and paste uh, Christians. You know, they have the look, they have the mannerisms, they have the tonality, but they also have the jargon. They have the jargon. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verses 3 on to verse 5. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. This is a reference, he's making a reference onto instruction and in righteousness. Because the doctrine which is according to godliness being separate than, other than that. Okay? All right? That's what that's a reference on to. You could uh, quite simply go to uh, Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. Okay, our reasonable service is what? Our reasonable service is... Okay, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You're proving it unto the lost world and stuff like that, okay? Christ gave us the, exa the example, in sample, of um, self-sacrifice, of charity. God the Father washed the stankin' feet of the apostles. If, if any of you have worn sandals at length on a hot, sweaty day, that, that's, that's a putrid thing. But see, the Lord, Jesus Christ, God our Father, gave that example of being other. Okay? Because, of course, he's, you know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He's God the Father. Obviously, he's other. Okay? Obviously, he's other. But that's what verse 3 is talking about. The doctrine according to godliness. The doctrine which is according to godliness. Being separate than that. Okay, that's what Paul's making a reference on to. He is proud. Knowing nothing but doting about questions and strife of words. Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Well, Brad, that's what you do. But, see, there's a profit to it. See, the jargon of Christianity is deceptive. Okay? And the distinction between who is and who ain't is blurred within the jargon of Christianity. Okay? Perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. And remember, you got to get out of your mind just the thing of gain as far as financial. Gain of subscribers. Gain of popularity. Gain of tangible things, whatever. Okay? It's deeper than just the do re -mi. Okay? The gain of uh, popularity, of public opinion. You know? When, uh, how, I find it really difficult... Uh, and I, I hey, bloke, you never answered my question, by the way. Okay? All right? You never did. All right? I knew that was you. You think you're so smart. But you never answered the question I asked you. All right? But I, I find it very difficult to believe to take someone seriously who goes about to attack Rome, which the saints should, but yet defends one of their biggest days. I, I, I really... <laughs> have a big time, big time difficulty taking that individual seriously, okay? So I have no interest whatsoever, and like I told you, bloke, I'm not watching that, okay? But then again, I know what your intentions were, trying to stir the pot. Yeah, you, you, you know, you got other people that you can manipulate, so go away, all right? Now, now go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 19. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, dead to what? To the world. Doctrine according to godliness, dead to that. Okay? If This is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And that's not about salvation. 
Okay, you come to the Lord his way, broken, contrite, and in fear of him. Call upon his name, and he save you. You are once saved, always saved, eternally secure. But see, you can be denied a whole lot of other stuff. Mercy. Grace. Provision. Health. All kinds of other things you can be denied. But salvation is not one of them if you come to him on his terms. You don't boop, boot the door. What were, you, what were you smoking when you came up with that, that phrase? What were you smoking? You didn't uh, expect anyone to call you on it. Brilliant. Anyway. Anyway. All right. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Why is that? I believe it is Ephesians 5. I believe it is Ephesians 5 verse 2. 30? Let's check. Let's check, shall we? Ephesians 5, verse 30. I think it is. I think it is, yes. Yes, it is. For we, Ephesians 5, verse 30, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones, the body of Christ. We ain't little Christs. <laughs> okay? But see, he cannot deny himself because we are part of him, meaning salvation. But see, he can, we can, he can deny us all other kinds of things, but not salvation, because if we come to him his way, his terms, as it says in Ephesians chapter 1, we're once saved, always saved. Okay? All right, the simple stuff. You know this, okay? Let's continue. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit. Okay, to no profit. Have you ever, you Christians out there, you King James Bible believing Christians, uh, have you, how long have you, have you spent trying to explain to somebody the difference between you as a Christian and the regular Christian? Hmm? Huh? How fruitful has that been? Huh? How fruitful has that been for you? Hmm? See, a lot of you people I doubt are out there that get out there, okay? And you only speak on the premise of what you see on a YouTube video. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Let's eat the context on this, okay? Because people's like, well, Brad, you're striving about words. But there's a profit to it. Okay? Uh, I, I, today, today, the Lord gave uh, as I was walking in the park, got a chance to witness my little pocket scriptures that I get that I have. I gave it to someone who needed a copy of the scriptures. I got other ones to, to replace that. But okay, I was out there. All right? All right? See, here's the thing. Getting our jargon right with scripture, okay, it's not petty. Christianity has blurred the jargon. All right? Words are important. Words have meaning. Okay? Most people, when you say Christians, well, someone who follows Christ. How readest thou? You tell me. You tell me what you think Christ is. Nine times out of ten, unless they're a Pentecatholic, they're going to describe to you the Christ that's given to, of them to, uh, to them of Rome. One God, three persons. Okay? The, the, the guy I was witnessing to. You know, you should, you know. It's just like, I, I talked to him. It's like, yeah, Christians tell you that God loves you and God's not angry at you, right? You should have seen his face. He's like, yeah, that's what they do. It's like, that's a lie. <laughs> should have seen the look on his face. He's like, <laughs> no man spake like this man. Hey, hot shot. Try it. Try it. Well, people don't understand what you're saying if you... Whose fault is that? 
So you're going to play along so they can understand you, but yet rejecting what the scripture actually says as far as the terms thereof? Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, you know what that's called? That's called man-pleasing. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, when you take in context verse 14 and 15, you have an answer to what this is talking about in verse 14, striving the words of no prophet. When you got someone like Mark the Messenger coming around telling you that you have to keep the commandments today, this argument was settled in Acts chapter 15, a little long ago, um, those are words to no profit salvifically. It's not that the, you know, the words themselves about the Ten Commandments are of no profit, but see, salvifically today we do not have to keep the Ten Commandments in order to be right with God or be saved. Okay? That's not how it works. So when you got someone who comes around not rightly dividing the word of truth, trying to take doctrine that is for another dispensation and make it rel relative for today, salvifically, those are words to no profit. Okay? Hence, Scripture itself is not... Hey, hey, hey! You know, you guys who like to twist everything. The Scripture itself is profitable. Absolutely! Okay, look, 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 look at this. Look at, hold your place here. Look at chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, throughly furnished unto all good works. But see, when you've got somebody coming along not rightly dividing the word of truth and trying to make it all mesh together. Okay? Saying you got to keep the commandments today. Uh, th th those are words to no profit. Okay? Or that you got to just do works like in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Someone who's concentrating on the, uh, on the Sermon on the Mount, which is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? See, verse 14 the answer, what that is to be, what Paul is addressing to, what the Lord is addressing to Paul, is defined in verse 15. Okay? By rightly dividing the word of truth. So when you got someone, it's like, hey, we're saints. We're saints, not Christians. Okay? The prophet is to be scripturally accurate. And then you go to the first uh, the thing of Peter, right? But see, again, you're not taking in consideration the context of what the term Christian is being compared with. Yeah, it's better to die as a Christian rather than a murderer or whatever. Yes, that does not validate the term, the use of the word to describe ourselves because that is a worldly term and even the context in that in Peter shows you that. Okay, so there is a profit to it. We're supposed to be other when Christianity just wants to be just like everybody else. A perfect example again of that is the King James Bible believing Christianity. Okay, you all wanted to be so different, but yet, come on, you guys have made yourselves your own little denomination within Christianity. You're just another denomination. Where, where is this power? It's all flesh. It's all flesh. Hence. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthroweth and overthrow the faith of some. If the resurrection is past already, what does that mean? If the re if the resurrection has already happened, then what? We're in the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> 
guy I was talking to today. It's like, well, we're in tribulation. It's like, okay, you, you could say that. But I, I corrected the individual. It's like, I held out the, the little copy of the scriptures. It's like, you will not find the great tribulation in here. And you should have, again, the look on his face. He was hearing things that Christians don't tell people. Well, they don't know about if I don't use the term rapture. Here's what you do. Like I did. Today, it's simple. You know, it's like after the redemption of the purchase possession, you probably refer, heard it referred to as a rapture. The guy is like, oh, oh yeah. It's like, that's not in scripture. And it's like, here, you will not find the word rapture in scripture. Okay? It's the redemption of the purchase possession or the catching away. Okay? All right? Simple. Then go on. Okay? You don't use the fake first and then explain to them the real. You use the real and then it's like, hey, this is not, okay, you've heard it referred to as this. That's not the truth. I told you what it is. Okay? Simple. But, you know, a lot of you guys got an image to, uh, <laughs> to uphold, don't you? Especially you copy and paste people. So like I said, I, I, I respect people who are at least up front with their stuff. Okay? That's why I do give a lot more respect to atheists <laughs> than a Christian. Because a lot of atheists, at least, not all, but a lot do, uh, you know, at least are up front with their, you know. When, you can, when an atheist so-called says to you, yeah, I want sin, I don't want even the God you're talking about. Fine. You can deal with that. It's when the when distinction is blurred. That's the danger. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Saved people are sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ Depart from iniquity. See, Brad, that says that about being a Christian. Um, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He's my Father. He's my Savior. Okay? All right. I just named the name of Christ. Jesus Christ. Yehovah saves. Okay? It's not a credence to take a worldly term to describe yourself and become like everybody else. Okay? Prepare yourself among yourselves. You are not wise. And, and, and Titus, Titus chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 9. We haven't even gotten into the main bulk of what we're supposed to be talking about today. Titus chapter 3, verses 1 and verse 9. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men. Now, the brawlers, not physical fighting, okay? All right, or arguing needlessly. Gentle is not don't re withhold truth. Don't take this in one sitting and cram it down. I understand. When you see that the Lord has opened something, you want to, you want to. It's like that's when you have to show restraint and be gentle. Because I've done this. You, you know, the Lord opens up the door for you and you start throwing this, that, that, that. And your intentions are good and the way to hell is paid with good intentions but what happens is you overload them and they get the mark the messenger deer in the headlights look on their face and you lose the moment. Okay? Here a little. There a little. Crumbs. Crumbs at first. Okay? You don't take the entirety of the sword and bury it down their gullet all at once. That's the gentle. Okay? But see, Christianity, don't scare them. Down here, these stupid Methodists, okay? They're, they're billboards, something like, uh, I can't remember. I was just so appalled by it. Everything they do appalls me, okay? But the gist of it was that on the billboard it said, come inside. 
that in order of what they're saying is, you want to hear the truth? Go to a building. I, I should have gotten the picture. I'll get it because they leave that up for a couple of weeks. But uh, I'll show it to you. Okay, I'll show it to you. I'll put it in like the community section or whatever. Okay, but what they're saying is you got to go to a building. You want the truth? Go to a building. You want the truth? Stay away from a church. The church is the body, the people, not a building. Okay? Where are you leading them? To the Lord Jesus Christ through the Scripture. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. I was one of them. So are you, hotshot. And I think it would do you well. It would behoove a lot of you to remember that. Especially a lot of these King James Bible-believing Christians, man. Oh, I mean, just look at some of the comment sections on some of this stuff with these King James. It's like, dude, dude, seriously. Did you, have you forgotten from whence you came? For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Shed on who? The saved, not on all people. That being justified by His grace, His grace, that we sh that we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And Jesus Christ is our hope. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works, not to stay saved, be saved, or anything like that. But see, we are called thereunto to not be conformed to this worldwide, that we may prove what is that good and perfect will of God unto who? The lost people. Okay? And it's not just outside there, it's within the four walls, ceiling, and floor. Okay? where the true test of who you actually are in Christ is. Okay. I remember, brethren, these infiltrating pond scum. Okay. They, they're all about what is to be visually seen. Who you are when it's just the walls, the ceiling, and the floor. That's the true test. And funny, the only ones that could see that is yourself, your spouse, if you have a spouse, God, and the devil. Hmm, interesting. But avoid foolish questions. The fool says in his heart there is no God. Foolish questions. I run into that all the time. People asking questions who don't want to hear the answer, but just like that one guy who did that 10-page dissertation. He didn't want anything to do with truth. He was just asking questions to be disputatious or to be, you know, to dispute. He didn't want to know the truth, okay? Those are things that we are to avoid, okay? Let them play their little high school uh, adolescent game that you can't answer it. <laughs> let them play that and let them wet themselves in their little diapers, okay? Let them. Doesn't bother us. Ought not to bother us. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Strivings about the law. Why? Because the law salvifically is not binding for us as the church of the living God. Okay? That doesn't mean that we are not under the law to Christ, which is given to us in the book of Romans, Romans 13 specifically. Okay? All right? But see, a lot of people, these Christians, these infiltrating 
uh, Jesuit coadjutor pond scum, and also the atheist, okay, uh, you know, that one uh, Muslim guy who just shreds Christians, with bravo to him, but he, he's reading from, number one, a Bible, a Gideon's to be exact, which is not the authorized version of scriptures. Um, all right, but see, he's a Muslim trying to dictate to a Christian the faith that they're supposed to have, and the Muslim has more knowledge than a Christian. That's, that's scary. But, but, dark sayings. Like when, you know, like when the, 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 the deer... <laughs> Mr. Murphy, who, who occasionally checks these things out, apparently. He, he, he does. Uh, <laughs> that guy's comical. Uh, it's not funny, but it's laughable. Um, some of the stuff that, you know, when trying to use a Bible, okay, an atheist, so-called, will go to the Bible, you know, not the scriptures, there's a difference, and try to say, see this? It's like, well, d d wait a minute. Wait a minute. See, if if I would ever talk to that one God, one message guy, I wouldn't. I would make one reference to the Quran about how it says in the chapter of the food how the Muslim will find commonality with those who call themselves Christians because they are priests and monks. Show me monk. Show me. Show me monk in the apocrypha. Who's monks? Shaolin monk or the monks of Rome? <laughs> anyway, dark sayings. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 6. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to to depart from evil. Okay? To receive the instruction of wisdom, fear of the Lord, justice, and <laughs> judgment, and equity. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Knowledge is the product of wisdom. Okay? A wise man will hear and increase and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Okay? A man of understanding departing from easel will attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. I have encountered before people when they come to this as from the people who do not believe on the true Lord Jesus Christ. They say, see, even, even the Bible itself says that the scripture is, has dark sayings. And the implication is that they're evil. No. See, these infiltrators can copy and paste. Example, the guy from Maine. There are a lot of people, and Dudley do right to it, uh, can copy him and paste it upon himself to put on a facade that he's a saved individual. Okay? That's how that works. All right? And see, lost people can skim across the top and get some truth. Yes. But the deeper things belong unto the Lord. Okay? Uh, just a reference here. Uh, now, this is in a totally different dispensation. Uh, Genesis 40, just one verse. This, uh, in Genesis 40 here, this is still the time of the patriarchal period, which is similar to today, but vastly different. Because the death, burial, and resurrection and blood on the cross hadn't been shed, and there's no eternal security there. Okay? All right? Big, glaring differences. Okay? But, in Genesis 40, verse 8. Okay? And this, like I said, this was the patriarchal period, a different dispensation, when things like this were applicable. Okay? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream. <laughs> Pentecostals. Yeah. And there is no interpreter of it. Point. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. 
And no prophet, prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. But see, Roman Catholicism, they tell you, you know, hey, like, like that billboard. Okay, you got to go to them. You got to go to the church to understand what your Bibles actually say, right? You got to sign up for that at that one course. You got to get so-and-so's study Bible. You got to get so-and-so's commentary. Why? Because what's missing? The Lord. So they give you a bunch of filler to take up for that which is missing. And see, you can, you can go ahead and get yourself one of these. Okay, this is a Thompson chain reference, okay? And the, and the, and the thing about the references, you got to remember, the references themselves, like see this? See that in the middle there? Okay, those are not inspired. The references in, within the text of Scripture themselves, that's inspired. For example, in Romans 12, Paul quotes from Deuteronomy, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. That, that's a clear reference. Okay, that's a clear cross reference. <laughs> All right, clear as day. Okay, the Lord uh, makes reference about uh, uh, referencing Isaiah 6, about how, you know, God has given them, how close their eyes, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should come and I should heal them. He's quoting scripture. Those types of references are valid because they're <laughs> scripture with scripture. How many of you in the scriptures, when you come to Matthew chapter 24, how many of you have seen references on to 1 Corinthians 15? Or 2 Thessalonians? Or 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? How many of you, how many of you have seen that? I, I remember dear brother Alexander. He pointed out even himself in one of the references in his set of scripture that uh, tried to point try to tie in the redemption of the purchased possession with the time of Jacob's trouble, meaning that they're one and the same, hence trying to persuade the reader by means of the reference that the redemption of the purchased possession doesn't happen. How many of you have encountered that by going and looking in the references? Hey! References in the cross references in the, in the middle there, okay, right there, sometimes they're good. Yes, sometimes they're not. Yes, but you've got to remember, they're not inspired. They're not inspired. But see, someone, an infiltrator, can get the Ruckman commentary, can get the Ruckman study Bible, can get a Thompson chain, okay, can get a Henry Morris. <laughs> they can watch the guy from Maine, all day and all night. Okay? They can do that. Copy and paste to put the facade on. Because there are parts of Scripture that can be readily understood by the lost. Romans 1, 2, and 3. Okay? But see, the deeper things belong unto the Lord. The true, deep interpretation you need the Lord for. John chapter 1. John, the dark sayings, they're not dark because they are evil. They're dark because in order to truly understand the deeper things of Scripture, you need the Lord. You need the Lord. Yes, there are things that you can understand as a lost person. I have yet to meet anybody, any lost individual, progressive. Oh, I can't understand the authorized version. You don't want to. That's the whole thing. You're, you're educated, progressive, and the thou thine ye throws you off, Mr. Genius. You give me a break. That, that's, that's one of the dumbest things. You know, y'all atheists, you, you, you're brilliant, right? You, you think you're so smart, but yet something like the ye, the thine thou ye begat, eth, throws you off. I mean, you're you're the you're the intellectual, <laughs> okay? I have yet to meet one individual who couldn't understand what Romans three, ten on to verse eighteen implies. Actually, I have encountered more often that people have understood it so well that they wanted to be combative with me about it. 
Some literally, and you know, I will defend myself. <laughs> I got a wife, okay? <laughs> I, I, I will defend myself <laughs> quite readily. But I've never encountered anyone when, you know, and like today, I stood shoulder to shoulder with the dude and showed him shoulder to shoulder in the little copy of the scriptures that I gave him. It's like, I, I read to him scripture, shoulder to shoulder, and man, it's like, hey, you see, that's what you do. Okay? That's what you do. But see, there are things there for you lost people to get. But the deeper things, you need the Lord. Uh, John 1, 6 on verse 13. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the capital L light, referring unto the Lord Jesus Christ, that all men through him might believe. He was not that capital L light, but was sent to bear witness of that capital L light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now see, a heretic wanting to deceive people will come to this, and I've encountered this, uh, <laughs> see everyone saved and they just don't know it. No, again, the light in the eyes. Uh, hey, you look. Uh, anyway, um, a dead person's eyes, when you look at them, uh, I, my mother's eyes, I've seen the eyes of a dead person before. Uh, there's no light. You know, when you take the photograph, the, the light reflecting in the eye, look at the eyes of a dead person. That's not there. The light of the eyes, meaning that you have life. All of you have been given life from the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave you that light behind the eyes, meaning you're alive. That does not mean that everyone's saved and they just don't. Try telling that to Dade Murphy. Try telling that to stupid head Christy Burke. Try telling that to, what's her name, Emma Thorne, Throne, or whatever her name was. Try telling that to Aaron Ra. Okay? Try it. Good luck. You're saved and you just don't know it. No. See, when lost people can figure that out and you got some dumb Christian, no, excuse me, um, stupid Christian coming around trying to tell you otherwise, common sense is like, like I said, you know? God loves you and he's not angry at you. Wait. Wait. But if I don't believe like you say, the God who loves me unconditionally is going to send me to hell? <laughs> it's, it's not funny, but it's, come on, guys. Come on, get your head out from betwixt Rome's buttocks. Okay? Seriously. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. The world knew him not. And God said, let there be light. God said, okay, Jesus Christ is the Word, capital W, made flesh. Flesh didn't become God. God became flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Okay? Flesh is not God, people. You have to remember that. Okay? He came unto his own, the Hebraic Jews, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Not angels, okay, adopted sons, okay, for us today in this dispensation. But when a Jew, especially during that dispensation, at the end part of the dispensation of the law, okay, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And see, right there, verse 13, is a pleh on you wicked, easy believists. Because you easy believists just believe and receive. You save yourself by your own belief. Your faith that you talk about is in your actual faith. Your faith is in yourself. Because you save yourself by... I'd like to hear just one of you admit that. I had hoped, I, I, I would hope, uh, the one that I would, uh, would like to see that come from would be Mr. Sunken Eyed from Canada. I, I'd like to see him. It's like, you know what, you're right, okay? Bleh. 
Okay, whatever. I'd love to see that. I would. I, I would. I, I really wish that man was a brother. But anyway, see, easy believism is exactly this. The will of man. You save yourself by your own belief. Verse 14. Uh, well, let's read verse 14. And the word, capital W, was made flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? The word was made flesh. The flesh wasn't made the word. Okay? <laughs> uh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 14. John 14. See, I, and you know, I've I've watched atheists, you know, who know a little a uh, little bit about scripture. I've even seen some use the scriptures, but then again, they, they mess that up too. Because why? Why? John 14, 15 on to verse 18. Uh, really quickly before we read this um, question: <laughs> Had Christ Jesus died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? So what does that mean? The dispensation that we're in John 14, it's still under the law. The law is still binding. Okay? That is very important to remember and to remember when you read certain things. Okay? Before the death period, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. We already looked at it. Okay? Let's continue. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the capital S, Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. Ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you, shall be in you, when the Holy Ghost is given, as it is in this dispensation, after the death, burial, and resurrection. We're going to look at that, okay? I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Beautiful set of verses right here to show you that there is one God who's comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Not that stupid trinity. One God and three persons. It's insanity. No. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Holy Ghost. Okay? The Lord is that Spirit. He is the Father. Us saved people have the Father dwelling within us. That does not make us God. Why? Because we sin. Jesus Christ never sinned. Ever. Hey, 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 come here. That's why the sinful flesh was sanctified because he did what no man could do. He never sinned, okay? We've talked about that. You've been rebuked on that plenty of times. Okay. So, anyway. Uh, what are we reading to? Oh, uh, that was it. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come to you. Uh, chapter 15, 26 and 27 in John. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, which proceed from the Father, he shall testify of me, and he shall bear witness, because he have been with me from the beginning. Because the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? He shall testify of me. You and I out there, brethren, we are a walking, living, breathing testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why sometimes when you're around certain people and you don't even have to say anything, make you know, check to make sure you don't stinketh, but <laughs> but some people just get freaked out about around you because the Lord in you testifies to the spirit that's in them, that spirit of Antichrist. Okay, all right, chapter sixteen, verses seven under verse fourteen. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth: it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now, what we've already looked at, okay, you weird Trinitarians, it's like, okay, and some of you lost people might be like, okay, wait a minute. 
Okay, Jesus said, I'll come to you, but now he's talking about the Father, and now what, what's going on? One God. One God. Not three persons. One person. A person is spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost was spirit. It's the spirit, excuse me. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the body. We're made in the image of God. This is very simple. Okay? This is very simple. And see, the Spirit of Truth, that Holy Spirit of promise that the saint is sealed with when we go to the cross, which is death, we are sealed with the Lord Himself. Okay? We have the Father living within us. Okay? And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have many, I have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now. Why couldn't they bear them now? Because, you know, he hadn't been glorified yet by a death, burial, and resurrection and bloodshed on the cross, and the Holy Ghost hadn't been given yet. And that is explains itself with the very next verse. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Why? Because this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. The Holy Ghost was not given as a permanent resident in the saved believer yet. Hence, how be it when he, the Spirit, capital S, important, Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me he shall receive of mine and shall shew it unto you. See, people, in order to get the deeper things of Scripture, you, you gotta, the Lord's got to save you. you there are things, like I said, Romans 1, 2, and 3. You lost people can understand that very easily. Even with the V's, the dines, the dows, and ye's, and begats, and the F's, you can understand it. You don't want it. And like I said, you tell me, Brad, I want that. Fine. I go, go ahead. We'll open another one. I'll leave you alone. Okay? Fine. There are other people out there. Fine. I'll give you respect if you do that. But if you don't, you're going to be still, I'm then going to bash you with a sword. And see, y'all don't like that. Y'all don't like that. But see, a lot of people, too, when the Christian comes at you with a Bible, not the Scriptures, the Bibles contradict. <laughs> and that Muslim dude points that out. That one message guy, he, he points that out. Okay? I would not mind talking to that guy. I don't think it would go that far, though, because I think we'd get on each other's nerves. And I would be quite aggressive with him as he would be aggressive with me and neither of us would back down <laughs> that that'd be interesting to talk to that guy that, that would that would be interesting I, I i admit that uh john chapter eight one verse john chapter eight one verse verse 12 john chapter eight verse 12 then spake jesus again unto them saying i am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. Now see, this isn't a contradiction in J to John chapter 1. Okay, you have life, light in your eyes, life from the Lord. But Jesus Christ, he is the truth, the way, the way, the truth, and the life. Excuse me. The way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. He gives to all, even you, life. But to have true life in him, you have to go to him his way. And when he seals you with himself, you have the life. Get it? You also have the light, the Holy Ghost, which will open the scripture to you. 
Okay? Let's see what happens. And you see this with so many of these coadjutors, with so many of these copy and paste Christians. Okay? Romans chapter 1, 18, and of course, 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of, unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shewed it unto them. You're made in the image of God. You have a spirit, soul, and body. There are some of uh, the atheist people, <laughs> atheists, self-theists, who they don't believe in a soul. Well, that you're stupid. You're stupid. Because in Scripture, a beast has a body and a spirit. So when you say, I don't believe in a soul, you're calling yourself a beast. And you are a natural beast. Not regenerate. Very, very regenerate. Not degenerate. Regenerate. You're not regenerate. Very, very meat for those of you who's like, I don't believe in a soul. So you have a spirit and a body, huh? So does Fluffy. And hey, look at evolution! Yeah, they, they tell you that your great ancestor was a sniveling piece of snot, which evolved from that into a monkey. <laughs> oh, what about revolting? How revolting. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The Godhead reference is significant because the invisible things from of him from the creation are, of the world are clearly seen. You look at another person. Another person has, a, even the wickedest devil from England has a spirit soul and body he's a person you see another person you are seeing what something that is clearly seen and the godhead reference is the reference that we are made in the image of god we're not little gods but that we have a spirit soul and body just like god does so when you look upon another person spirit soul and body there's your evidence that God exists. Simple. Because that when they knew God, just here, just here, this is not the relational knowing. Prove it to you, absolutely. They glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. Just keep reading the verse. Imagination and knew it is not the relational new. It's the knowledge. Prove it. Imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Dark sayings. Foolish heart. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. To behave foolishly is to behave as if you say in your heart there is no God. Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and the fool said in his heart there is no God. You see this um, demonstrated in virtually every single self-theist you will encounter. And a lot of Christians too, especially the sleazy believists who you just barely scratch them. I'm better than so-and-so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bravo. Roll up another one, man. I hope those cigarettes make you cough. Okay? <laughs> All right? do and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made into an image made like to corruptible man ye shall be as gods you will be like the most high and to birds and the four-footed beasts and creeping things wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship doesn't serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. Verses 5 on to verse 8. 
See, a lot of these fakes, a lot of these fake Christians, <laughs> fake Christian, that's an oxymoron, but um, a lot of these people, um, as I've been informed, there are some people out there who the farther, the longer they go in their supposed walk with the Lord, the crazier they're getting. You never answered the question, bloke. All right? You scoundrel. You never answered my question. And you won't. Uh, dude, you're not fooling me. I know that was you. You can, uh, don't be ashamed. Leave, leave a comment with that same account on this video. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I won't remove that one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Anyway. But a lot of these, you know, because like I said, they can get the Rachman study Bible. They can get one of these. Okay? And just use that instead of having the Lord guide them. Why? Because something is missing. And when something is missing, like the Lord, it needs to be filled with man. Having a form of godliness... But denying the power thereof. From such turn away. Denying the power thereof. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts. In the Garden of Eden, who'd Satan go after? Eve. Where was Adam? We don't know. Why wasn't Eve by Adam? We don't, don't know. It's almost irrelevant. Almost. But goes to the woman first. The weaker vessel. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Where are we reading to? Verse 8. Now as John Ace and John Brace withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds <laughs> reprobate concerning the faith. Reprobate concerning the faith. The faith that was once delivered on to the saints. You know, brethren, we have got quite a few examples of how you are not to be the longer you walk with the Lord. Because it just seems to me that so many of these people in their long uh, This month will be my 16th year since the Lord saved me. 16 years ago. 28th of this month, 28th of this month, will mark 16 years that the Lord has saved me, since the Lord has saved me. And there's a lot of witnesses, especially on YouTube, of people who've been saved for years and years and years and years. But, but with Christianity, the evidence suggests that the longer they go in Christianity, the crazier they get. That's because Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. I don't ever want to get like that. And thankfully, I have brethren who get on me about things like that. And praise the Lord for it. Praise the Lord for it. Because a lot of these guys are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. But having a, look at verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away, the power thereof. What is that a reference on to? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 18 on to verse 21. Denying the power thereof. Denying the power thereof. If the Lord lives in you, you are a new creature. That's what makes you a new creature. Because God dwells within you. Okay? Being a new creature will bring about a change. Watch out for these people who are all about to change life, change life, but yet not about being a new creature. You have to be a new creature in order to have a change according to scripture that these guys are talking about. But they, they kind of glib, glib over the uh, new creature. 
Reformed alcoholics have a changed life. Reformed porn addicts have a changed life. Former narcotics users have a changed life. Is it brought about by being made a new creature? Or you just make a decision? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 18 on verse 21. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. And you talk about puffed up, man. You look at these King James Bible-believing Christians. Look in these comment sections of these guys. The puffed up, the arrogance, the pride of these people. You're another denomination in Christianity. Bravo, you twits. Bravo. Very proud of you. Good for you. For the kingdom of God, spiritual, is not in word, but in power. That, that, that Dudley do right guy has the tonation, the patterns, speaking patterns, the mannerism, basically a copy and paste. And so many got the word is right. The guy from Oregon, he's got the right words. He's got the right speech. Morphology. But see, something's missing. Something's missing in these people. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love and in the lowercase s spirit of meekness? But look at that again. Verse 19 and 20, but I will come unto you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, power. What is this power? The power of a changed life. Okay, is that power of a changed life something that you did, or is it the result of being a new creature? I think a majority, especially of the King James Bible believing Christians, have themselves taken this and changed and try and fit themselves around the rhetoric. That's what I believe. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 now, verses 1 and 2. What is this power? 1 Corinthians 2, 1 and 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Like John MacArthur does. And a lot like, uh, you know, they use all these fancy schmancy. There's nothing wrong with that. But see, a lot of these people are doing this to replace something that isn't there. They're trying to give off the illusion that they are something that they are not by trying to... You see this a lot with the streaming Christians again, like I've told you. They use all these big, fancy schmancy words, you know, about this and come up with these terms about certain heresies. They're trying to give you this impression that they're saved by using a vocabulary. There's nothing wrong with that, but see, they're doing it to be a replacement for something that isn't there. Verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And see, this is the thing. If you're actually saved, you died to yourself, broken of your self-righteousness, that you're a good person and you can do something to save yourself. That, unfortunately, that doesn't save you from your pride. But the pride of that you're a good person and that you can do something to save yourself. Being broken of your self-righteousness. Which the easy believers plays to. Because hey, just believe and receive. I, and like I said, you can scratch these people and say, well, I'm better than so-and-so. <laughs> Bravo. But what is Paul talking about? What is the power? You have God the Father dwelling in you. God the Father can change your life not not at gunpoint you got to make the right decisions but you know if you like lord i don't want this give me what's this i was like okay let's do this the power that is being referenced 
is the Lord himself. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. The beautiful Galatians 2, Galatians 2, 20 on to 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Yes, not I, but Christ liveth in me. But we're sealed with the Holy Ghost. The, the Lord is that spirit. One God. Christ of spirit. Soul and body. Jesus Christ is the Father. Okay. It's not modalism. One God. Okay? One God. You're saved. You have the Father living in you. Who is the Father? Jesus Christ. Who is the Holy Ghost? The Lord is that spirit. Okay? I am crucified with Christ. He went the way of the cross. Obviously, he died to his self-righteousness. Which Christianity likes to jump over. Death to self. See, in order to be born again, something has to die. In order to be fixed, you've got to be broken. And a lot of these coagitors, infiltrators, these copy and paste people, haven't Christ in them. Because they weren't crucified with Christ. Death. The crucifixion was death. Okay? Like we already read in Timothy. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay? Uh, by the way, that doesn't mean that Jesus... <laughs> Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> faith of Jesus. That Jesus' actual faith is in you. That's not what that's talking about. You're an idiot, Scott. You're an idiot. Okay? Lord rebuke you for your Calvinistic heresy. Okay? I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay? Colossians 1. Colossians 1. Okay, and here, this is the bow on the top of the present here. Colossians 1, 25 on the 29. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but is now made <laughs> manifest to his Christians, to his saints. Here's another place, brethren, that you go to when you encounter one of these guys. It's like, well, it's just been, it's, uh, once, it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. They were looking forward to the cross in the Garden of Eden. No, no, they weren't. Here's another place for you. But they, they take your pen, you know, get your little Sharpie and mark that, okay? Mark that, brother, if you haven't. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, hope of glory. Christ in you, sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Jesus Christ, he is the Father. Do you get it? I, even you lost people who might watch this, even you by now should be able to get this. Okay? Whom we preach, saints preach, Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, fear the Lord, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And if you're going to say, well, that's sinlessly perfect, what do you do with Romans 7? That was before Paul was saved. No, it wasn't. It's all present tense. No, it wasn't. Romans 7 is not before Paul was saved. Give me a break. You talk about a piss poor excuse. Okay? Give me a break. Give me a break. Okay? Y'all justify anything to justify yourselves. 
okay? The perfect is relational. Relational. Not sinlessly perfect. Because, hey, if you could be sinlessly perfect down here on earth, then you would be also one who could do what only God could do. Okay? And, hey, even sleazy believists can destro destroy and dismantle these guys who say you got it, you don't sin anymore. Even they have done that. Okay? So where they dismantled the stupidity of sinless perfection today. Okay, even, even fake gracers can get that one right. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. So, when these guys are ever learning, they're never able, come to, never able to come unto the knowledge of the truth. They have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. What is that power? The Lord Jesus Christ himself living within them. So when Paul talks about, I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified, is the Lord actually in these people? Are these peop people actually saved? How do you know? You judge yourself first, but you judge them according to the perfect standard. Okay? Okay? This is not hard stuff to figure out. But then again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, okay? Brethren, don't, don't, don't be so heartbroken when people, when you're starting to see insanity in somebody who's supposedly a saved individual. Don't, don't be disheartened by that. I mean, it is disheartening, but... Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 24. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, are saved, not being saved, are saved, it is the power of God. You go the way of the cross, which is death to yourself. You take responsibility for you putting him on the cross. And you have the hell scared out of you. You're afraid of the Lord. And you and cry out to him for mercy. And if he save you, he seals you. The power of God is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's what a lot of these Christians don't have. These atheists, they don't have this. Hence, dark sayings. It's dark unto them because they're not saved. Scripture is full of dark sayings unto the lost. Even though there are things in Scripture, like I said, Romans 1, 2, and 3, that you lost people can understand quite readily and easily. You just don't want it. But the deeper things of Scripture, you need the Lord. Yes, the true can come from the false. Yes. Yes, the true can come from the false. Yes, they can. But see, there's a certain depth that they can only go because... What's lacking in them is that power. And what is that power? The Lord Jesus. Right here. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us, us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Now, in context here, this is a reference unto worldly wise people. Which... We already addressed with Romans chapter 1. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe in Rome writing up a what? The 400th version of the Bible? Okay. Where is the disputer of this world? The accuser of the brethren. Okay. Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? See, that verse tells you what wisdom is being addressed there. Because there are two wisdoms. There, there are two wisdoms. Okay? Two wisdoms. There is no option C. We addressed this in the last video. Okay? There is no option C. There's wisdom from above. And there's that that is earthly, sensual, devilish, which Christianity is giving you. Okay? 
For after the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. By what wisdom? The wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Philosophy. The love of man's wisdom. Okay? It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Who calls preaching foolish? Lost people. See, God uses man to preach. Okay? And see, this is prophesying today. The Lord in me is speaking to you through his word to you, saints. That's prophesying today. Okay? <clears throat> For the Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block. Stumbling block. That's our Mashiach on the cross. That's him. Right. And unto the Greeks, foolishness. What do you, what do you mean, this de death, burial, and resurrection? What do you mean he rose from the dead the third day? What does that mean? A lot of Christians, a lot of Christians, don't believe, truly believe in the resurrection of the dead. They don't. They know as a Christian that they have to give lip service to it. But I, we, my wife and I, have encountered many, many Christians who don't truly believe in the resurrection of the dead. They know that it's in there and that they're supposed to believe it, but when push comes, when the rubber hits the road, they don't believe in it. It's full of wonder. But unto them which are called. Called. We're all called the way of the cross. We're all called the way of the cross. This is not Calvinism. This is not Calvinism. Okay? This is not Calvinism. God has chosen the way of the cross. You are the called. When you go the way that he called you to go. The way of the cross. And the cross is death. Okay? The cross is death. Okay? But unto them which are called. Uh, but unto them which are called. Both Jews and Greeks. Christ. The power of God. And the wisdom. So, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Power of a changed life. Um, that's a new creature. You have to be a new creature. Alcoholics can have a new life. Drug addicts can have a new life. Porn addicts can have a new life. How brings about this... Or, excuse me. They can have a, cha uh, uh, a changed life. Excuse me. Changed life. They can have a changed life. Is it the result of being made a new creature? How is how are you a new creature though? Huh? How are you a new creature? First Corinthians five seventeen again. Therefore, if any man therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And how are you in Christ if when Christ is in you? Okay. Okay. People. And see, this is again the reference onto Isaiah twenty eight. You know, line upon line, precept upon precept. Okay, these guys, atheists, Christians, you know, you can get all kinds of works of men to put on the facade. You can copy and paste all day and all night. But that power isn't there. What is that power? Who is that power? Jesus Christ. A lot of Christians have the words, they have the, um, the vocabulary, they have the jargon. They can do what seems to be the works meet for repentance, but there's, only, there's a depth only that they can go. The 
Don't be surprised. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2 now, again, verses 9 on to verse 16. Okay? What is it with these people? But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his capital S Spirit, the Lord himself. For the capital S Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God, the dark sayings. It's not that the scriptures are evil. They're dark unto you lost people because you're not saved. There are things in Scripture that are there for you to uh, to convict you, to you know, to uh, to make you aware that you're in trouble. Romans one, two, and three. Okay, but the deeper things. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the lowercase s spirit of man which is in him? And man is natural, earthly, sensual, devilish. That's why you need to die to yourself to become a new creature having the Lord in you. Which the majority of these Christians don't have. For what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the capital S Spirit of God which you receive when you go the Lord's way of the cross and he saves you, he seals you. Hence, the spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. Excuse me. Now we have received not the lowercase s spirit of the world. And then what is the spirit of the world? That spirit of Antichrist. Okay? But the spirit which is of God. Lowercase s something that is imparted. We have the Lord living within ourselves. Save people. The capital S spirit living within us. But we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Work out what he has put in. And he imparts onto us things. Okay? That's not a contradiction. Okay? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. If any man lack, uh, lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to men liberally. But you got to believe that he is. Do you believe? You say you do. You say you do. People say many things. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. You know, like I said, if you have the unfortunate privilege of listening to some of these um, streaming Christians and how they talk, man's wisdom. All the way. But which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Spiritual things. This is a spiritual book. You need God to truly get into the deeper things of Scripture. But the natural man, earthly, sensual, devilish, Receiveth not the things of the capital S Spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Why? Because fool says in his heart, there is no God. Rather, the God that is to them is themselves. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Hence, the majority of Scripture is unto people dark sayings because the deeper things of scripture you need the Lord for but you can buy a book you can buy a commentary and gobble that up and put on the facade like so many of these people do but he that is spiritual judgeth all things yet he himself is judged of no man yeah who judges you the the Lord through the scripture. This is how we judge one another. This is how I judge myself. This is how I judge you. See, my judgment of you is flawed, but if I judge you according to this, judging myself first, there we 
Go. See, and you need a perfect standard for that. Perfect standard, KJV. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that we that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So does that mean that we're smart? <laughs> that, that dumb idiot. <laughs> so, so hey, you go to that, it's like, hey, so we got the mind of Christ too? Then why do I still think about it? Why does sin still come into my mind? You're an idiot, man. I'm not being kind to you. You're deceiving people and leading them to hell. Okay? Hence, Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Dark sayings. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known in our fathers dark sayings of old. Hmm. Isaiah 30 verses 18 on to 21. Isaiah 30 verses 18 on to 21. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of the, thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. Interesting on that, Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4. Excuse me, brethren, I think my wife just came home. Proverbs 4, verses 23 and verse 27. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder, that means to think, the path of thy feet, that all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left, evil and of course Matthew chapter 7 Matthew chapter 7 13 on to verse 14 enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth on to life and few there be that find it. Look at Christianity. Broad is the way. You know, like one church building or denomination, jump around in a whorish fashion from one to another. You are a Methodist, now you're a Baptist. You are a Baptist, now you're a Lutheran, German Catholic. You are a Lutheran, now you're an Episcopalian. Now, now you're a Presbyterian. Now you're a Pentecostal. Now you're a King James Bible believing Christian. What's next? What's next? Jeremiah 6. <laughs> What's next? What's next? Well, I mean, come on. Jeremiah 6. Verses 15 on to 21. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay. They were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. 
Neither could they blush. Listen to some of these live streaming Christians, these easy believers, fake racers who let profanity come out of their lips and talk about things that they shouldn't. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Choice. You made the choice not? You don't want it. Here's the way. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh on to the Father but by him. You want to know who the true Lord Jesus Christ is? The authorized version of the scriptures. Here! I also I sent watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet! It was being warned. But they said, We will not hearken. I've been witnessing the dudes before where they've literally put their hands on their ears because they didn't want to hear me reading scripture to them when they asked me to. <laughs> Therefore hear, ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts. Be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. Because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Oh, yeah. So what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba, and sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people. And you can reference... Uh, in, Jer in Isaiah 66, I will choose their delusions. And also in 2 Thessalonians chapter 12, uh, chapter 2, it's like, you know, because they receive not the Lord, uh, love of the truth, therefore God shall send them a strong delusion. Uh, instead of messing that up, hold your place there. Go to 2 Thessalonians, okay, chapter 2, okay. Instead of, you know, misquoting, yeah, uh, verse uh, 10 and 11. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Verse 12, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Verse 21 in Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah 6. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people. You, didn't, you choose what God hates. You don't want to believe the truth. Okay? Uh, we will not walk therein. But said we will not hearken. We will, we're not going to do it, nor are we going to hear. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friend shall perish. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Walk therein. And ye shall find rest, rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Psalm 50. Psalm 50. 16. On to 21. Psalm 50. This was not the video that I thought was going to be done, but I'm not in charge on here. But unto the wicked, God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. Well, that's difficult to understand, isn't it? Attacking Rome, but yet you're defending Rome. 
and one of their biggest days. <laughs> when thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Who is my brother? <laughs> Christian brothers, yeah, right. Who is my brother? You are because you say you are, huh? Excuse me. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Here it is in a nutshell. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. You shall be as gods. See, the easy believest brings the God who is down to their level because they save themselves. Atheists, they put themselves above God. They, you know. Have you figured it out that man makes lousy gods? And Verse 18, excuse me, when thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him, and his, hast been partakers with adulterers. John 10, John 10, when thou sawest a thief, went along with the thief. John 10, verses 1 and 2. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Go ahead, put the door, you idiot. <laughs> what, what on earth would have possessed you to come up with that? Then again, you never counted on someone calling you on it. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, verse 7 on to verse 13, and we'll be done. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. Reference onto the redemption and the purchase process. It's reference. Okay. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. God loves you. God's not angry at you. Just believe and receive. I am come that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. God, the Lord Jesus Christ, has given every single one of us life. Light behind the eyes. But true life is in Christ. That power is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd... Whose, I said it that way purposely, obviously, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Where are we reading to? Verse 13. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep, but careth for their own pocketbook. Is it me? Or are things getting crazier out there? Is it me? Or is these Christians starting to get more loopy as time goes on? I don't know. You tell me. But that's going to be it for this little video. Uh, thank you for watching if you do. Uh, like I said, this was not the video that I thought I was going to do, but then again, I'm not in charge around here. Okay? 
Thank you, dear brethren, for your prayers. Thank you. Please continue to pray for one another. Please continue to pray for us. We need it. And thank you. We love you. Hopefully this helped one of y'all. Thank you for watching if you do, and we will see you in the next video, okay?